What is going on everybody? Welcome back to The Awesome Show. Today we're looking at the Hasbro Marvel Legends Spider-Man Retro Collection Wave 2. So this is another full wave of Spider-Man figures on those retro card backs. You know, going back to those 90 Toy Biz figures. So these look pretty cool, of course, with the awesome card backs. You know, with the Spider-Man from like the animated show from the 90s just looks awesome. But in this wave, we've got six figures, three good guys, three bad guys. So starting off here, we've got Symbiote version of Spider-Man, which is always a cool version. As well as the Mark 1 armor of Spider-Man, which looks cool. Then we've got... Uh, the Ben Riley version of Spider-Man so always cool to get another version of Spider-Man there and then we also have Shocker followed up by Hammerhead and Hobgoblin which are both very cool I love that Hobgoblin that's just a classic villain to me so all of these figures look really cool I like the villains in this wave I think the Spider-Man themselves are pretty cool for this you know not just your standard Spider-Man we get different versions so just a very cool wave overall that I'm excited about so let me go and get these open and out of the box and we'll take a look at them together well, let's start off with the symbiote suit Spider-Man, which of course is Peter Parker. But during the Secret Wars event, Spider-Man was transported to Battle World by the Beyonder, where he went looking for alien technology to repair his torn up costume, and he found a machine holding a symbiote, and upon its release, it covered Spider-Man in a black and white costume that would respond to Peter's thoughts with the powers to mimic other clothing, as well as store objects and produce its own version of webbing. So, of course, this is a very classic thing for the symbiote version of Spider-Man, you know, what led to us getting Venom and stuff. Once it separated from Peter and attached to Eddie Brock, we got Venom. So pretty cool overall. So it is just, of course, Spider-Man with the Venom symbiote attached to him. So he just has this all black and white outfit. Still has the spider on his chest. So in the all white with the legs going down there all the way to the back, connecting with the other spider. And then he's got the white on his hand. So he has the white boxes there and then the white eyes. So pretty much it's just your normal Spider-Man just in the all black and white costume, which looks really cool. It's just an awesome looking figure overall and just a very nice figure itself with like our actual figure with the joints and everything with this new updated version which is awesome but let's do his movement so his head can twist all the way around he can look down that far and up that far so pretty good there in the neck I wish there was a little bit more movements but it's just the way it's designed where it's like the ball joint down into the neck piece there so you only get limited amounts of movements and you can kind of see the joint sort of showing in there but I wish there was a, just a little bit more movements would be nice but still pretty good then we get the shoulders that can come up which I feel with a lot of these figures on like the right sides here that the shoulders don't come up as far I have issues but with like the left side I can get it up there so it comes up to 90 and has the butterfly joint which is of course always great we have the shoulder that can twist around and again pretty stiff on these figures but it can twist all the way around we have the bicep twist the double elbow joint that can bend up that far at least a little bit over 90 there so pretty good and then of course the wrist can twist around and flex back and forth we have the ab crunch in the middle, so you can see that separation in the white there. The spider, so crunch forward just about that far and back that far. So not too bad overall, not the greatest, but still is pretty decent. And of course can twist around there as well. And then we have the lower ab crunch, which again, it's going to be hard to probably see in the light. But we have the crunch, so it can bring even further forward. And then with that upward crunch, get it at least that far forward. And then same going back, you can get that far back. So pretty good crunching with that additional joint thrown in there, but still not the greatest like going forward. But then we got the hips that can come up to 90 and out to the side that far, not too far from doing the splits thigh twist all the way around a double knee joint that can bend up that far to the back so not too far from kicking his own butt a shin twist there in the middle of the leg and then the foot can flex back and forth and twist side to side so once again really good movements in the figure pretty much like the, some of the best movements you can get I just wish like with the spider-mans especially you could do even more posing to like the classic spider-man poses which I know at least for me it's really hard to get them even close to that a lot of the times but still pretty cool to have all those movements and then just the awesome look of the symbiote suit spider-man is pretty dang awesome so this is a really nice figure now he comes with some accessories a lot of these will have just a lot of the similar things so he has fist hands there so we get a set of the wall crawling hands so of course the hands there they can crawl on the wall and then we also get the set of foot pans for shooting the webbing so it still has the white there box on him and then just like the rock on hands but for web shooting so that's pretty cool that he comes with those as well and of course we've had multiple versions of the symbiote suit spider-man over the years so let me bring some in so here are three other versions of the symbiote spider-man that i was able to find so of course this is our newer one here the one we're looking at and then the one on this far side here is the one that I feel is pretty like closest like the most similar and everything so I don't know if that's the newest again I don't know much about these Spider-Man they're just ones we've got over the years and I don't know when they came out or anything but to me this one just overall looks the most similar and it has a similar body design and stuff where these two over here are a little bit further off and do seem a little bit older but like I said 
that I could be wrong with some of this, but of course this one's completely different. It's got more like lightning bolt style legs and then the eyes that sort of hang off the face, but I thought it was pretty cool. And just another version of the Symbiote Suit Spider-Man, but of course this one here to me looks most like the classic version of it, which I like a lot. But either way, you can't really go wrong, but I do like overall the body-wise of this new one the most. And next up we have Spider-Man in the Spider-Armor Mark 1, which is a battlesuit armor that Spider-Man wears to fight the new Enforcers when they attack New York with their high caliber guns. So he has the suit made of a pseudo-metallic compound that Peter developed that allows him to be bulletproof, but unfortunately because of the bulletproofness and the weight and everything, it slows him down and he can't jump as high as he normally can. So it's a pretty cool looking Spider-Man suit here. It's, you know, it's got this all like metallic, shiny sort of silver, it looks really cool. And and has the, of course, Spider-Man logo, same sort of Spider-Man style face with all the webbing design and the black eyes and then the black suit underneath. So it's all like this material. I assume it's all bulletproof or it could just be the metallic pieces. Not sure. Of course, it would leave him open quite a bit for bullets, but it looks pretty nice going down his legs, on his arms. Of course, there on the back, I even like the big fat spider there as well. Belt around his waist, all in that metallic silver just looks really nice. So it's a really nice looking armor. But of course, with it being this sort of body, we will have limited movements, but still really nice looking spider-man suit just overall now for the movements we have the head that can twist all the way around you can look down that far and up that far so there's already some limited movements they're not horrible but just not as good of course as the last one the shoulders can come up there to 90 rotate all the way around bicep twist the double elbow joint that can bend up that far so better than that last spider-man wrist can twist around and flex back and forth and then of course we have the ab crunch just one on this body so it can crunch forward there and back so pretty good crunching decent for the figure and twist all the way around at the waist hips can come up 90 out to the side that far thigh twist all the way around a double knee joint that bends up that far to the back very close to kicking his butt and then we get the foot that flexes back and forth and twists side to side so yeah, it did have some limited movements compared to the other Spider-Man, but some were better, like the elbow joints, which is cool. So although it's a different body, not a bad Spider-Man figure at all. And for accessories, we get additional hands, so of course have to have the flip hands. And I like how it even has the armor and stuff there on his hands, which look cool. So pretty nice to get the flip hands to go since he just has the fist. And along with that, we also get some webbing. I don't know what you do with these exactly, but you have a smaller webbing and then like a bigger webbing, which is Ben. I don't know if it's supposed to be for a reason or if it's just like the packaging did it or what, but we do have these two versions here that are pretty cool for webbing that we can put on people or whatever he's fighting whatever so just nice accessories thrown in here and then don't really have anything to show along with this i know we have other spider-man armors but i get so confused on what they are so didn't bring them but we do have another version here that my brother got and then took like the gundam marker and lined all the lines doesn't look the greatest just because it's hard to do with you know like a marker piece but it does look a lot better i think overall compared to this because it really makes the lines stand out and everything so it looks pretty cool just overall I do like the lined up version a little bit better I just wish Hasbro would have done that themselves so the lines would have probably been much cleaner and I think overall either way it's not bad I just think the lines stand out much more and looks more animated with the lined up version but not a bad figure overall of the Mark 1 armor Spider-Man. And next we've got the Ben Riley version of Spider-Man, which was a genetic clone of Peter Parker created by Miles Warren, which was also known as the Jackal. And he was made to torment Spider-Man, but after being easily defeated during their first encounter, he went into exile, returning five years later after learning that Aunt May was sick and made amends with Peter. And so they fought crime together with Ben being known as Scarlet Spider until Peter left New York City with MJ and Ben became the new Spider-Man. So that's what we have him in the form here as the new spider-man which looks pretty cool it's you know just a different take of spider-man so like his upper body is mostly the all red with the webbing and a big spider on his chest so a big long spider with the legs going all the way around to the back connecting with the other one and then the lower body and the rest of the body has the blue so the blue arms and the blue legs until you have some red there down on the lower legs into the boots and then the red webbing on the fingers as well and then he has those web shooters on his wrist which overall you know it is a clone of peter parker and spider-man stuff so he has all the exact same powers as Spider-Man. The only difference is his web shooters where he has the full around wrist things, which also have impact webbing and stingers built into him. So again, it's just another Spider-Man, but a cool and different looking form of him. So let's go and do the movements. The head can twist all the way around, can look down that far and up that far. So pretty much the same movements as the black suit Spider-Man. Shoulders can come up again. This side is a little bit of issues, but with the other side, we can get it up to 90 with the butterfly joint. And of course it rotates all the way around 
around, has the bicep twist, the double elbow joint that bends up that far. So again, pretty similar to the black suit one, wrist twist around and flex back and forth. We have the ab crunch in the middle, so crunch forward and crunch back. So pretty decent crunching again with the upper crunch, has the twist as well. And then the lower crunch towards the waist, so crunch further forward. And then if you kind of crunch it as much, you can go that far forward and that far back. Then the hips can come up 90 out to the side of the far thigh, twist all the way around, double knee joint, bends that far to the back, and then have the shin twist in the middle of the leg and the foot flexes back and forth and twists side to side. So yeah, it is the exact same body as the black suit Spider-Man, just obviously the repainted form this time, which makes it a pretty decent figure. Now for accessories, we get a lot of the same things as well. So he has the foot hands on already. He comes with a set of fist hands, which are cool. I like with the blue and the red showing there. And then he also has a set of the wall crawling hands. So once again, exact same as the black suit Spider-Man. Now we do have older versions of the Scarlet Spider version or the Ben Riley version. So over here we have the Scarlet Spider, which looked pretty awesome. I always love that look with the all red suit and the blue hoodie. But then we have the other Ben Riley version of Spider-Man over here on the side, the older form, which definitely the newer one looks so much better. But the other one did come with an additional headpiece and like hands and stuff to make it like the Carnage version of him. And so we bought another one of this new Ben Riley to put it on. So the head looks pretty decent overall, you know, red sort of match and everything. But unfortunately they change the blue color so the hands don't fit as well so unfortunately although we tried to get a second one to be able to just make this one into the carnage version unfortunately it didn't work out because of the blue so we'll probably just have to put these back on that older version and use that one as that version instead but pretty cool there to have ben riley with his other forms and a pretty cool figure overall once again no real issues with the figure and next up, we've got Shocker, which is real name Herman Schultz, and his parents died at a young age, so Herman turned to a life of crime, but unfortunately, he wasn't very good at it and got arrested, and while in a prison workshop, he used the resources around him to build these gauntlets that would send out shockwaves that would shock his enemies as well as open up safes, but they were super strong, so he had to wear a heavily insulated suit, so that's why we get this look overall for Shocker, so he has the all, like, yellow and brown outfit, so it's his heavy heavily insulated suit so that's why it sort of has like the quilted design into it which I always think is cool it's you know kind of dorky but I always find cool as well especially for Shocker so it has the all yellow so you can see it there on his chest even up all the way at his face so it has like I said that quilting design so like the diamond pattern with the brown over the top so it's like the brown underwear spandex that go up around his shoulders has brown running down his arms and the center of his head almost like a mohawk design and then running down the legs to the boots as well with some metal on so it has like metal there around the top of his boots or around his waist and then of course his gauntlet pieces as well that do all the shocking which are vibro shock gauntlets and they can project concentrated blasts of air that vibrate at an intense frequency so that sounds pretty cool I guess for Shocker since you know he invented these gauntlet pieces for himself I don't like the look of the gauntlets they just look like metal on his hands so almost like he just got some metal armor but I guess since they have the additional powers of the shocking and stuff I guess that makes it pretty cool now for the figure with the movements can twist all the way around for the head the head can look that far down and that that far up so this has the different joint but you pretty much get the exact same sort of movements as the spider-man so not really much difference there the shoulders can come up to 90 there and a little bit stiff but can rotate all the way around we get the bicep twist the double elbow joint that bends up that far so not too bad and then of course we get the gauntlets that twist around right where they connect into the arm there then we get that crunch in the middle here so a single crunch so crunch forward and crunch back so pretty good crunching twist all the way around at the waist just under the belt Hips can come up 90 out to the side that far, thigh twist all the way around, a double knee joint that can bend up that far to the back, so not too bad. A shin twist at the top of the brown boot section there, and then the foot flexes back and forth and twists side to side pretty decent movements overall not many limitations just really like the wrist there since it's all connected with the gauntlet piece you don't really get much there but speaking of the gauntlets we get some additional accessories so we have additional hands to switch out but this time we have the hands that are more like sort of open so you can have the closed fist or the more open ones which I don't really know exactly what I would want to use but pretty cool that you can switch them out so you just pull it out right at the top of the gauntlet pieces and then switch them out but I think for now I'll just kind of leave the fist hands on them and with that we can also have some of the shocking effects so we have of course like our effects we get with a lot of stuff so these we can put around on his arms as well for the shocks like being sent out so let me put these on 
So there is Shocker with the effects on the end of his hands, which look pretty cool just overall, but you know, just the basic effects we normally get, it would have been cool to get something new. But then of course we do have the older version of Shocker. So here's that older version, which of course it doesn't look nearly as good at all compared to this newer one. So definitely the newer one is the version I like the most, but it looks pretty weird, sort of creepy and everything just with his design. But I do like that he has the black lines on him. And so because of that, once again, we bought a second one to put the lines on. So used again, like a gun a marker to put the lines on this one was much less cleaner unfortunately so it doesn't look nearly as good but i do like once again like the lines being on him it just makes his outfit design stand out so much more so i wish once again hasbro would have just put the lines on him similar to this older one just so we would have had some nice clean lines maybe so a wash on it or something just to make them stand out just something to add more so it's not just all flat material there but overall this shocker once again is definitely the coolest version and definitely a much needed version of shocker and next up, we have Hammerhead, whose family fled the Soviet Union at a young age, and growing up, he would try to fit in at school by claiming he was Italian, but at home, this would anger his father, and his father would beat him with a hammer, especially in the head. But later in life, he would end up joining the mob and convincing them he was Italian, and made it into the mob by killing his school bully and his father. But during an event, his head got damaged in a brawl, and so a doctor replaced his broken skull with steel, and when he woke up, he became fixated on a 1920s movie poster which was like one of the last things he saw and so he adopted a mobster identity wearing 1920s clothing and using 1920 weapons such as tommy guns and adopting their speech pattern so he became this 1920 gangsta eh? so overall he looks pretty cool of course it's just a guy in a suit but he's got the weird messed up shaped head so hammerhead where his head is all i guess misshapen and stuff but it's got a nice like flat top design with the hair and then the wrinkly forehead and just the big angry face you know does look like a mobster sort of guy but like i said he's just in the normal suit so he's got the blue pinstripe suit with a black shirt and red tie underneath and I like even on his knuckles he has like a pair of brass knucks which I believe it says head I'm not exactly sure but I assume it says head so if he you know punches someone in the head and it reverses back to so it says h-e-a-d I believe and so it would say head on their head so part of hammerhead so I assume that's what that's all supposed to be and then the pantsuit going down to the black leg dress shoes and stuff so pretty nice figure overall just like body wise just a suit body so this could be easily something customized we just take and put something else on he does seem a little bit too like muscular and bulky and everything compared to just like a normal human but i still think to easily just switch a head out for somebody else to have him in a suit but for moments his head can twist all the way around there he can look down that far and up that far so not too bad but not as much movements as some of the others shoulders can come up just about that far under 90 again because like the shoulder pad pieces there on the shoulders rotate all the way around bicep twist the double elbow joint that can bend up that far there so not bad wrist twist around and flex back and forth a little once again i'm sure there's an ab crunch and everything but with the suit on can't really get too much crunching in there but it can twist around at the waist the hips can come up to about 90 there out to the side that far thigh twist all the way around double knee joint that can bend really stiff leg but can bend up that far to the back pretty much kicking his own butt and then you just get a little bit of foot movement back and forth and twist side to side so not a bad figure with movements, but it is a suit body, so you have those limitations in there, but it's pretty much what's always expected. Now for additional accessories, we have some additional hands. So we have some like open style sort of grip hands. One's a little bit tighter than the other, but I just have some additional hands there, but I like the hand with the brass knuckles, so I'll probably always leave that on, but the other one will probably switch out for his weapon. For his weapon, we get a baseball bat. So unfortunately, like I said, he likes to use Tommy guns and stuff. So that's like a classic thing with Hammerhead. But unfortunately with Marvel and Disney and everything, not wanting to have guns anymore, they just gave him a baseball bat instead. So let's go and put the baseball bat in his grip hand and switch the hands out. So there is Hammerhead with that baseball bat, which looks pretty cool, like I said, but it would have been awesome to get a gun with him. But I like having the baseball bat and the brass knuckles and stuff. Just gives you a different looking version of Hammerhead here with that. And speaking of, we do have the older version of Hammerhead. So there's the older figure that I believe was a chameleon and came with a head for Hammerhead there as well. So that's just the older version we have there. So this new version is definitely a much needed upgrade compared to this older one that's much shorter and has a better looking head just overall. So very awesome there for a Hammerhead. And that leaves us with our final figure of Hobgoblin. Now with Hobgoblin, there's many different versions of him throughout the storyline. So I just went with the version that was supposed to be from the Spider-Man, the animated series from the nineties that I grew up watching. And in that, this is Jason Masondale Jr. And he was a petty crook that took up the name of Hobgoblin. And I assume like in the show and stuff, became a hired assassin by Norman Osborn, where Osborn created all of Hobgoblin's weapons that we see. And Osborn gave him the task of assassinating Wilson Fisk, but Spider-Man interfered and so 
he failed and Osborne refused to pay him. So he turned against Osborne and then joined in partnership with Fist to go after Osborne. But then when trying to do the job, Kingpin also refused to pay him. So he turned against Kingpin and Osborne and Spider-Man and just went crazy on all of them trying to take out each different one. So otherwise he looks pretty much just like the normal Hobgoblin I've always seen. The only real difference is to me the arms are usually more of a green color where here they're just pretty much almost a straight up blue like a darker sort of blue color but he still has the all orange outfit so he has like the orange bodysuit in the middle and then the orange hood and cape piece which is actual orange where the others are more of like a yellow orange with like the gloves the bodysuit in the middle as well as the boots but like I said the orange cape there with all the tatters and tears stuff fits perfectly for Hobgoblin as well as the hood going up with like the tail piece there in the back just looks awesome and he's got the creepy face so he's supposed to be a goblin so he's got like a goblin style face with the big smile showing all the teeth the big nose that's all like pushed up and then the red eyes in there which look creepy so just very cool looking just face design overall belt around his waist and then like I already pointed out the boots on his feet and of course the blue leggings in the middle there as well so pretty basic looking figure but really nice looking and just classic from that 90s cartoon but let's go into his mood so his head there can twist a little side to side and yeah I expected limited movements because of his hood and cape and stuff so just a little side to side there and look down that far and up that far so I'm surprised he even gets that much movements which is still pretty good so the pretty decent movements in the neck actually shoulders can come up to 90 rotate around within there we have the bicep twist the double elbow joint that can bend up just that far so about 90 wrist twist around and flex back and forth and then we got the ab crunch in the middle so crunch forward that far and back that far so not the best crunch ever twist all the way around at the waist hips can come up 90 out to the side of the far he can do the splits again which is good thigh twist all the way around double knee joint that bends up that far to the back uh, shin twist at the top of the boot and then the foot can flex back and forth and twist side to side so overall doesn't have the best movements ever, but still pretty good for the figure. So very nice figure just overall. Now he comes with a number of accessories. So first off we get a satchel. So a nice purple satchel. So that's why he's like his like purple accessories. So a purple satchel that can go around him. So I assume we'll have to probably pop his head off in the cape and then probably slide this on would be my guess, but I'll see what I can do with it. So there is the purple satchel around him, which looks pretty nice. Just adds a nice pop of color into him. He also comes with a pumpkin bomb, which of course is one of his classic weapons. So we have a pumpkin bomb here and they can come in different forms such as explosive or gasp so it looks pretty nice we have like the jack-o-lantern look to it with some of what looks like the green gas coming off of it so with this we can just try and take it and put it into one of his hands it looks like he has the exact same hand so you can do it really in either one but I don't really know how well he'll actually hold these so yeah it's pretty similar to the past ones where he can't really hold it or anything too well in his hands so you just have to kind of get his hand sort of flat and then just put the bomb just sitting in his hand there like that is really all you can do and finally he also comes with the goblin glider so his nice purple glider with the goblin head on it. it looks pretty much like the gliders we've had before so let me see if i can go ahead and pop them on this so there it's not the easiest to get him on the gliders especially to stay standing up but there's probably about the best i can which isn't too bad like i said it's just not the best looking for him because like i said i don't want him to fall over or anything but that is pretty cool there to get that for hobgoblin with the purple accessories and stuff just looks really cool but of course we do have older versions of hobgoblin so here's probably the one that's most similar just has like the armor like plating and stuff there on his arms like scale plating but otherwise you know very similar sort of figure overall and then we have this older other version of hobgoblin which is pretty weird i think is pretty cool it's you know a different design for him but it doesn't you know look like that classic version like this new one does so definitely probably my favorite version of hobgoblin so far but i think the others are still pretty cool as well so nice to have the different versions and as i mentioned there's many different people who play him so you can have just different versions being different characters overall so pretty cool figure overall just there for the hobgoblin well there is our marvel legends retro spider-man collection wave 2 set where we had our three different versions of spider-man of the black suit spider-man the spider-man armor mark one and ben riley spider-man as well as our villains of shocker hammerhead and hobgoblin so all six of these characters are really cool of course for me i personally love the spider-man villains so the three villains are the coolest part to me and then the three spider-man are cool as well especially since they're all different spider-mans you know it's not just the exact same spider-man figure over again so pretty cool to get this six different figures and this retro collection wave that i absolutely love so let me know what you thought of them down in the comments and if you enjoyed my review let me know with the thumbs up but i want to thank you all for watching i hope you all stay awesome out there and i'll see you in our next review